In the months before my mother passed away from terminal illness, in 2021, my bicycle became an unlikely companion. Plug into a playlist of thumping tunes, I would lose myself in the rhythm of the ride. Each pedal stroke taking me further away from the overwhelming demands of caregiving and the palpable sense of impending loss. At her funeral, my uncle revealed that my mum had confessed to feeling guilty about being a constant burden to my father and me. And that she found solace in knowing that my new cycling hobby gave me a breath of freedom. This knowledge left me torn. I stopped cycling for a while, weighed down by my guilt at realising that she had always sensed my need for a respite from my responsibilities, and, indirectly, from her, yet never held it against me. When I later resumed riding occasionally, I never again experienced that feeling of liberation I used to have, until I went on an impromptu bikepacking trip around Jeju Island, South Korea, in September this year. With mostly flat terrain, gentle slopes and a manageable distance, Jeju Island is the perfect launch pad for bikepacking newbies who may not be accustomed to long rides and challenging climbs. Say my more experienced travel buddy, who once did a solo bikepacking trip in Taiwan. Divided into 10 courses, the well-marked Jeju Fantasy Bicycle Pass meanders along scenic coastal roads. With only a few elevated sections, when the trail takes you into idyllic port towns. At a leisurely pace, you could complete the 234 km round island ride in 4 to 5 days. Upon landing in Jeju, we check into Mir Guest House near Yongduam, our starting point on the northern end of the route. We pick rest stops that didn't stray too far from the trail, some bikepackers prefer to venture further in. A favorite among cyclists, Mia Guest House is a 10-minute cab ride from Jeju International Airport. Its friendly owner Peter is fluent in English and has welcomed enough riders to readily accommodate our request to store our bike boxes until we return from our round trip. Bikepacking is like a road trip on two wheels, where you carry just your bare necessities on your bike. Next, we stop by the Jeju City Tourist Information Center, a brisk walk from Mir to pick up a passport for our journey. At each of the 10 courses, you can collect stamps at designated checkpoints resembling red phone booths on the sticker sheet as proof of completion. We then return to the hostel for a good night's rest before beginning our adventure the next day. Embarking on day one of our ride, we made for direct shelter 21 kilometers from Mir, traveling in an anti-clockwise direction. Our journey took an engaging turn when we met a land, a seasoned cyclist from Quebec, Canada, during a pit stop for breakfast. His tales of bikepacking across Asia, from Seoul to Busan, with plans to conquer Taiwan and Japan next, ignited our spirits. His advice to embrace slow travel on two wheels and to savor every moment resonated deeply as we ventured through Jeju's unique landscape. The quiet bustle of towns blended seamlessly into a serene landscape of black basalt rock formations, a result of volcanic activity on the island millennia ago, against a deep blue sea. Taking a land's words to heart, we paused to appreciate iconic photo ops, such as the Dodudong Rainbow Coastal Road, with its vibrant bollards, and the whimsical Aicho Tewu horse lighthouses, which looked to me like Trojan horses. Our journey continued past the pristine white sands and emerald waters of Hyopji Beach to Hijorium Village Park, a 21 km ride where we collected our second stamp before moving on to our last stop of the day at Songgeksen, another 35 km in the city of Seogwipo. Paddling along the western coast, we were greeted by stunning views of towering wind turbines along the Sinchang Windmill Coastal Road. Nearing the end of day one, we face our first challenge in the form of formidable headwinds after nearly 10 hours of cycling. Drained, yet determined, we pushed our bikes for the next 45 minutes and finally arrived at our hostel, Tototot Jeju Backpackers. 
weary but satisfied at having achieved a distance of 85 kilometers on the first day of our bikepacking adventure. We settled in for the night, unaware that the next day would test our limits even further. Opting to go easy after the previous day's grueling ride, we decided to complete just two checkpoints for day two. Moving from Songgaksen to Bitwan Badong, 30 kilometers, and Sosakak, 14 kilometers. We had been expecting cool September weather of 16 to 20 degrees Celsius, but faced intense heat, coupled with relentless climbs as we headed into the Queen Port towns along the southern trail. But in a moment of exhausted epiphany, I was struck by the parallels between cycling and life, tough, uphill battles often lead to gratifying descents. And you learn not to fear the sight of a looming slope because unexpected gems might await you at the end, such as the moment when we pushed past an especially steep climb and were rewarded for our perseverance with a breathtaking ocean vista around the corner. Riding on, we passed Bitwan village, where we spotted several black-clad Hainio Jeju's legendary female divers, and stopped for a moment to admire their incredible strength and resilience. Our relatively short day ended at Gudio Guest House. After checking in, we explored the buzzing Siogwipo Mill All Market, a blend of traditional and modern, offering everything from local delicacies and produce to Jeju souvenirs and street food. Day 3's journey along the southern coast was a testament to Jeju's unpredictable weather, with sudden thunderstorms forcing us to seek shelter multiple times. Midway through a severely disrupted ride to Paiosian Beach 28 kilometers, we decided to stop for lunch at Mr. Crab. There, we tucked into a hearty Cajun-style seafood boil served with uniquely Korean elements such as seaweed rice and abalone. Post-lunch, we resumed our journey in contemplative silence along a tranquil tree-line stretch to our next stop at Songsen Ilchilbong, 22 kilometers. Feeling myself easing into the zone, I looked down to see a yellow butterfly hitching a right on my handlebar. Lingering for almost a minute, it felt like a comforting sign from my mother, reminding me of the joys of cycling and her presence on my journey. This lifted my spirits, and I silently thanked her as I rode on. Reinvigorated, to our final destination for day three at Co-op City Hotel Songsen. As we were on a tight schedule, we didn't make it to catch the sunrise on Songsen Ilchilbong, a bucket list item for many travelers, on day four. Winding along the eastern coast, we discovered the sparkling Gimnyong Beach 29 kilometers with its cobalt blue waters and the lively Hamdiok Beach 9 kilometers further along, packed with groups of holiday makers. Stopping to fix a flat tire, we found ourselves serendipitously in front of Mogul Burger, an upscale burger joint known for its specialty carrot, garlic and spinach buns, and spectacular views. Featured on the Netflix travel series The Hungry and the Hairy, the burgers certainly live up to its fame. Happily sated, with one of the best, and most unique, burgers you'll find in Jeju. We were all set to hasten back to Yongduam, our final 25 kilometers, navigating our way back to the city took us to the peak of Sarabong Park more ascents and descents, whelp and down to the port of Jeju. As I looked up at the sign that informed me I was less than 10 kilometers away from our final checkpoint, I felt overcome with a surge of emotions and he cried. Reflecting on the past few days, I had not anticipated the profound sense of gratitude for life that this journey would awaken in me, nor the sense of fulfillment at having completed my first bikepacking trip. Yet, there was a pang of grief once again, the realization that I could no longer share stories with my mum hit hard. But in my sorrow, there was also a newfound appreciation for my dad and loved ones who are still here to listen to tales of my unforgettable experience. My journey was more than just a physical challenge, it was a life-affirming, healing passage through grief. Through it, I learned more about the intertwined nature of joy and sadness, 
life and loss. Now, whenever I cycle, I take comfort in the enduring connection with my mum and imagine she's along for the ride. 2.